Just at the memory of Ron, I think all of us should, uh, all of us able-bodied ones can uh, click their heels for Ronnie today. Perfect shot for that. He was the heart and soul of the Chicago Cubs for nearly a half century. Player, broadcaster, lifelong fan, friends and fans remembering Ron Sano today who died at the age of 70. It's 5 o'clock. I'm Mark Sapelsa. And I'm Lourdes Duarte. We are starting in the sports office today. Santo lapsed into a coma Wednesday, died of complications from bladder cancer in Arizona yesterday. WGN Sports Director Dan Rohn is here as we look back on his life, Dan. A long, sad day. Yeah. Uh, near miracle, really, that we had Ron Santo for as long as we did. He was a diabetic his entire adult life. When he was diagnosed at age 18, doctors told him he'd be dead by 45, and here we are saying goodbye to Ronnie at age 70. This is a guy that made a difference, and not just on a baseball field. That Ron Santo and the Chicago Cubs would be forever intertwined was never in question. I loved the Cubs when I was in Seattle, Washington. When I watched the Cubs... On uh, TV on a Saturday, a game of the week, American League on Sunday. But there was something about Chicago Cubs and Ernie Banks. And all my offers to sign 60 major league teams, the Cubs were the lowest. But I picked them because I felt there was something special, and there is something special. There. Thus began a 14-year on-the-field marriage between Santo and the Cubs, and it was good. Chicago loved Santo a blue-collar guy who left it on the field every day. And Santo adored the Wrigley experience. It was obvious by his numbers. Five gold gloves, nine all-star games, and a lot of home runs. That's pretty well hit. Get ready for number 300. Back, back, back. Hey, hey. A home run for Santo, the 300th of his career. 342 when all was said and done. Even though he was not lucky enough to play in a World Series, a life-lasting relationship between Ronnie and the Cubs had been formed. And what set Santo apart even more was that all his baseball greatness was accomplished under the cloud of diabetes. He was diagnosed right after he signed his first contract. We're in playing in San Francisco, and it's early in the morning, and I see the, the, the bathroom door was halfway open, and I see Ron get himself an injection. And I look at it, this Ron's hitting 336 at that time. I was hitting 210. And I said, Ron, I don't know what that is, but I need some of that. After a final season with the White Sox in 1974, Santos' on field career was over. But he was back with the Cubs in 1990 as a color analyst on WGN Radio. First with Tom Brenneman, and then 15 years with Pat Hughes. The Pat and Ron Show. You couldn't buy that kind of entertainment. A little pop fly toward Mark Grace. He's waiting. He's got yes! it. The Cubs are in the playoffs. The Cubs win. Brent Brown drops the oh, ball. No! He drops the no! ball. He was a great player, so I learned a lot of things about baseball. Um, he also taught me how to laugh at myself. That's a very important thing to learn. Uh, I, I'm sure I will miss him every day for the rest of my life. Santo was winning over a whole new generation of Cubs fans. But as the years went on, Ron's diabetes took a more profound hold on his life. In 2001, he lost a leg to the disease. In 2002, the other. Life became exceedingly more difficult. It's a very insidious disease, but everything I've always seemed to, you know, bite the bullet and come back strong. But Ronnie not only met his condition head on, he fought back with annual fundraising efforts to find a cure for diabetes. His walkathons and charity golf events raised tens of millions of dollars. It's amazing how time has just flown by. I can't, you know, it's just gone so fast. Uh, and uh, it's my 14th year with the golf tournament and 31st year with the, uh, my walkathon. It's, it's been unbelievable. No matter what happened, Santo never once thought he wouldn't be back in the booth for the next season. And he was always right. There were further complications from cancer and heart disease, but the Cubs kept him going. This keeps me alive. Are you kidding me? What I've been through, this, when I get to this ballpark, I'm up here. Santo was fighting another battle. He and hundreds of thousands of Cubs fans believed he deserved a spot in baseball's Hall of Fame. And time after time, he was denied entry. Nobody got in. In 2003, 
Ron Santos' beloved Cubs made the Hall of Fame a moot point. In a moving ceremony at Wrigley Field, Santos' number 10 was retired forever. A lifetime achievement for this old Cub. When I was told that they were going to retire my number, and I mean this sincerely, I thought I had to get into the Hall of Fame to have that done because this flag hanging there down the left field line means more to me than the Hall of Fame. That is my Hall of Fame. I'll tell you, it was a life very well lived by Ron Santo, and we will all miss him, no question about that. Uh, two things Ronnie didn't accomplish in his life, uh, the Hall of Fame would be one, and the Cubs making or winning a World Series <laughs> would be number two. But he touched so many people, including Cubs.